How's it going, everybody? So, uh, today is like the last day I can make it up for paddlefish, archery, 2022, Gavin's Point Dam. I've been guiding all month long, and I got uh, my tag for myself, and I've been out a few times trying to pick through them. And uh, I'm gonna try to pick mine up today. I'm gonna sort through them a while, but I'm gonna probably shoot one just uh, show you guys how I clean it and then how I cook it too. So, uh, yeah, let's go on up. This is my boat, the Carpog 2. Got my cooler full of ice. Got my, my Oneida Osprey bow. So this is my Oneida Osprey. I had custom done. Call it the Fisher Price bow. Carpzilla Rest from Rich Porter. TNT arrow tips. If you can see it, they work really well. Muzzy reels. Monkey wire line. Kind of what I use on everything I have. to film and uh, troll and hold a bow. Yeah, check out these awesome, see that blade thing? Check out these bow holders. Booyah. Pretty sweet to have. All right. We're gonna go find some paddlefish here. I don't think I'll be able to get the kill shot on video by myself. But either way, I'm gonna make an attempt somehow, some way. Got an idea. Stay tuned. All right, I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at here. I'm gonna try to sneak up on it. It's towards the last day of the season. I'm not seeing very many, of course. That dark spot out there. There's a couple, two, three of them coming up. See how close I can get. They're right there. Those dark spots. Anyway, I'm going to shoot one. Well, got him. Let's get him in the boat. Oh. All right. Got him. Good shot. Good fish. Let's get this tip out before he thrashes and gets me. Definitely a good fish. Let me uh I think you'll be able to see right there guys. Oh, there we 
go. Heck yeah. Big old mouth. Ooh, adrenaline going. For sure, a cool fish. Gonna get his head beetled out. European mount. Healthy fish made of meat. I'll show you how I tag them. I see a lot of people doing it wrong. Or where it could fall. So one of the things you want to do is, in its fin here, don't poke him here, it'll tear right out. Poke him right there, through the meat. Make a hole all the way through. So here we are at the cleaning station. Now, people do these lots of different ways. I, Nebraska changed their rules where you can literally fillet it into two halves. So I literally just fillet it like a normal fish, cut the skin off, bag it up. I see people do the craziest things. They hack the tail off and they think they gotta twist it off, pull the spinal cord out and then chop it into a million pieces and gut it and take the head off. And then I go, well, when you get home, what do you do? Well, when we get home, we take those pieces we staked out and we cut around the, cut the good meat out of it and then we throw the rest away. Well, that doesn't make sense to me because I mean, if you just fillet it, you'd have two big chunks of meat. Plus, in Nebraska, you can't do that right now. Well, you might be able to for archery. I'm not sure about that, but... You have to keep them two whole pieces when transporting during snagging season, at least. We got some cool coloration on these fish. Pretty cool fish. Yeah, they're filter feeders. They eat plankton, and that's it. Some people tell you different. They'll say, well, I caught one in the mouth. Well, you snagged it in the mouth. They, they literally swim around like this, just back and forth, just filtering out plankton. And, yep, they compete with the Asian carp up here, so we're seeing lots of longer, skinnier fish here nowadays. The Asian carp up here at Gavin's Point have got pretty, pretty wild, but I mean, he's still, he's still made of meat, I always say. He's got a good slabs on him, so. There's the cool, looks like little paw prints they all have. Pretty neat. I'm actually gonna European mount this one. Now have Brad Wolverton at Humbug Taxidermy do it in Pilger, Nebraska. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flay it out. I'm not gonna be able to record myself, so I cut down here. Just like a normal fish if you ever fillet another fish. Just right down the back, slab it off, flip it over, fillet the skin off, have a big old slab of meat, so stay tuned. Okay, got them off. That's how we do it. Right down the center of the back. Right down like that. There is no bones in them except for like a, a spinal cord and like a big chunk of like cartilage right through here. All the way through the back. So what I did is I filleted the meat off with the skin attached and then threw the skin away here. 
That's what we're left with. It's good looking meat. We'll go home. I'm not sure yet how I'm going to cook this. Kind of thinking about grilling it or pan frying it. I'm not sure yet. But Yep, I just continue with the other side and I'm going to go right away and get it on ice and head home and get it cooked. So we're home. Got it all flayed out. Soaked it overnight. Made sure it's nice and clean. Got my cutting board ready. Shore lunch is always a go-to. You can't go wrong with that. There's so many different good ones. So I'm gonna take this, hack it up into like chunks that I bread and fry, and then we will uh, go from there. So I usually just kind of chunk it up into, you know, pieces about like this. You don't want them real thick. You don't want them really huge either. Sometimes I'll do this, cut them lengthwise. Need a sharper knife. All my sharp knives are in the boat. We'll keep those in the kitchen. So yeah, we'll cut all this up into chunks. Ziploc with the breading and I don't put a lot of people do like an egg wash and stuff I don't do that I don't know why I don't I used to and I kind of just started skipping it and I like it better so that's the way to do it chunks about like that all right so put it in the Ziploc There. I'm gonna dump the whole bag in. Dump the whole bag in. Make sure it's nice and sealed. I'm gonna shake it up. Get it all nice and coated. You don't really need to let it sit or anything. I see some people like, oh, I let it sit for a half hour. I just kind of make sure it's not soaking wet when I put it in there. And it's, you know, wet enough where it's going to stick to it really good, especially the short lunch stuff. So the key to making good fish is your temperature. I like to do at least 375, so if you watch, it's only like 340 make sure that thing gets all the way up to 375 and after you do your first batch make sure you let it sit and reheat back up to 375 before you put the second one in makes a huge difference green lights on we're ready to go so usually like in this bag i'll give it one more shake here and i'll do about i'll show you you don't want to put too much in at one time either. You kind of spread it out. It's that good old Nebraska paddlefish. It's probably about half of what I cut up right there, so that'd be perfect. Let me let it go swimming again. So it don't take long to cook it. It's only been a few minutes, but I kind of give it a little bounce around. You see it ain't quite floating yet. When it starts to float, it's done. And uh, also the color. It's just not quite there. This is some newer oil, so it won't get as like dark brown with new oil. But we'll check back here in one more minute or so. Another thing, this is how I cook 
90% of every fish we catch here in Nebraska. I mean, it's such just like a basic recipe on how to fry fish. But everyone's like, oh, how do you make your fish so good? I mean, I don't, as you can tell, I'm not doing anything special. Just taking care of it and I don't know, it's pretty basic. Anybody can do this. All right, so you can tell it's starting to float up. Looking nice and golden. Heck yeah. So we'll pick it up. Let it drain there for a while. Usually I put a little uh, salt and pepper, or any type of seasoning you want on it. After I dump it out here. So I'll just put it over here on this paper towel. Let it sit for a while. This is when I'd put the salt and pepper on and let it cool down. That is all I do. Pretty easy to make. Nebraska paddlefish. Strompus outdoors. Alright, we're gonna break this open and show everybody how nice and flaky that is. Just kind of falls apart. It's some good stuff. Got some homemade tartar sauce for it. It's gonna be the bomb. You know it's done when it's the color of your golden retriever. Right, Ruby? Sit. Sit. Sit, Ruby. Little fart. Oh, yeah. We got our paddlefish all cooked up. Nice and fried up. This is kind of a basic fish taco I make. I do make different ones. I usually have lime. and I have a cilantro, but I don't have any onion. I just kind of threw this together quick. This is slaw, uh, like coleslaw mix. I usually try to find the stuff without carrots, but it's almost impossible. I like it for the crunch. And then I usually put some uh, little salsa, hot sauce. For some reason, we're out of hot sauce. So, But I have the good old Taco Bell sauces always come through. So yeah, I usually just throw a couple pieces of fish is all it really takes. Per taco I mean you can load it up usually I cut them a lot smaller than that put a little little slaw on it a little, I like a lot of cilantro I'm weird some people hate that stuff but I love it usually this is when I put a ton of onion and lime juice on it make it even better a little, a little corn salsa there and we're gonna go with these things are almost gone we'll go with the Baja Taco Bell sauce on it stuff is money dude usually like to get a spicy tartar sauce if I can find that too they make some of that or I just add a little hot sauce to it it's my quick little thrown together fish taker.